Hello, welcome. In this video, we're looking at Khan Academy, the last section, which is trigonometric equations and identities. And the first thing we're looking at is evaluating inverse trig functions. So let's do a couple problems from this section so you can get a sense of it and see how it works. And we'll do a little bit of a background as well. Uh, so for example, it says the following are all angle measures whose cosine is negative 0.26, which is the principal value of the arc cosine or inverse cosine of negative 0.26. So first of all, let me show you how to solve this. Um, th this, this set of questions, it's fairly routine. Uh, what you need to do is pay attention to whether or not you're in radians or degrees, then press mode. Here, I'm, I'm in degree right now, but I wanna be in radians. Scroll down, hit enter quit out and then I just hit second cosine you can see the little inverse cosine icon there and then I put in whatever I have so in this case it's negative 0.26 it's in radians right I hit enter and I get 1.83 and that is this choice right here right so it's choice D but I want to explain a little bit about the, this idea of a principal value and why there are multiple answers um, so what we'll do, we'll actually start with sine, and then we'll talk about cosine. So I'm going to make a blank page. And the first thing I want to do is pull up a graph of the sine function. So f of x equals the sine of x. And I know the first example is about cosine, but just bear with me. I'm going to press this wrench, put pi for my x-axis, scale this up. Okay. And then I'm going to take a screenshot of this. Okay. And now what we should do is talk about what's going on, like why the inverse trig function has something called a principal value and what that's all about. All right, so first of all, this is a sine wave, all right? This is a, a snapshot of a sine wave. So in this situation, our function is f, and f of x is equal to the sine of x. Now, let's say I said, all right, well, uh, I want to know what the sine of 45 degrees is, which is um, right here, or 90, let's say it's 90 degrees, make it simple. 90 degrees is up here at pi over 2. That's 90 degrees. And what would I do? I, I might look up on my graph and say, oh, well, at pi over 2, the sine is 1. And the idea is that, of course, in that case, f of pi over 2 equals the sine of pi over 2 which is equal to one. But you can see from the graph that there are other locations, other angles that have the same sine value. And there are infinite possibilities here because if I just extend this line along, I'll run into the number one over and over again as long as I extend sine. And it will be infinite unless I restrict the domain of the sine function and the range of its inverse. So. Let's talk about that. So it is true that the f of pi over 2, sine of pi over 2, is equal to 1. Okay, There's no problem there. right? In terms of speaking out functions, here we have our group of, let's say, angles. And, our, our, and we have a group of ratios here. You know, Think about what the sine function does. It takes an angle, like pi over 2 and it maps it to its corresponding ratio of one, and that's what the function f does. An inverse function goes in the opposite direction. right? We, we use notation like this to show an inverse function. And everything's great here, right? But this only works if we restrict the domain of our function. And there's lots of ways we could restrict it, but the convention for sine is to restrict it, I'll highlight it here, from negative pi over two, or negative 90 degrees, to positive 90 degrees here. This is the chunk that we restrict it. So we add this to the sine. We say, all right, you could you can work with the sine and you can work with this inverse, but let's restrict the angles that we pick from negative pi over two all the way up to and including pi over two. So negative 90 degrees to positive 90 degrees. So we're restricting the domain of our function. And that means we're also restricting the range of our inverse. Because if we didn't do that, if we didn't do that, we would, we would, our inverse function would not be a function. It would be a, some kind of relationship. So, for example, we have angles and ratios here. Again, pi over two. F is a function. It maps pi over two to one. 
and the inverse seems like a function, except if I add 2 pi to pi over 2, and that's just 4 pi over 2 plus pi over 2, it's 5 pi over 2. So I'm just adding 2 pi radians, a full rotation essentially of, of the wave, right? That, that also has a ratio of 1. And on the graph, it's going back and forth, that's right here, right? This is 2 pi plus pi over 2 is right here. And that's at 5 pi over 2, 2 and a half essentially. And that also has a sine ratio of 1. Now, that's not a problem from this perspective. Remember, a function, multiple inputs could have the same output. But the reverse is no longer a function. Because if I reverse this, I've got 1 as an input. It's going the other way now. And my inverse relationship maps this input, because the inverse function uses ratios as inputs, as everything's backwards, it produces an, an angle as an output, but it produces two angles for that one input, that one ratio, and that's not what a function is. However, we avoid this problem altogether if we cut the domain of our sine wave. In other words, the way we've cut it here, there is only one angle that has a sine of 1, and that's at pi over 2. No other angle in this domain has that feature. There's over here where there's one angle negative pi over 2 that's a sine of negative 1, but nothing is essentially repeated in the way we say that we've created a 1 to 1 uh, function. In other words, every input has one output and every output has one input. It goes both ways. It can be inverted. Now, um, what's confusing, at least for me, is I'm going to color code blue here, so inverse is blue in this diagram. Um, when we talk about the restrictions we make, for sine, we restrict the function angles from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 so that we can invert it. Um, but we also, we could say that we restrict the range of the inverse function. So we restrict the domain of the sine function because it starts here. That's the, this is the domain of the sine function. Takes it, the sine gives us a ratio for that angle. The inverse, though, starts here. So this is the domain of the inverse and then goes back. So we're actually restricting the range of the sine, uh, the arc sine function, and the and so on and so forth. But instead of writing it all out, let me just show you. Here they have the inverse trig function review. There's a lot of cool stuff in here, but if, if you scroll up, or in my case up, uh, you get this table. And what this table is showing us, let me just copy that. Um, let me just erase what I wrote here. Okay, so what we have here is a table that summarizes the way we restrict the ranges of the inverse functions or the domains of the functions themselves. So in radians, sine and tangent actually, and we'll look at a picture to make sense of this, uh, they both are restricted the same way. So I'm gonna put a little star there. They're both restri restricted from negative pi over two to positive pi over two. We saw why that works for sine, and you could have restricted it in other ways, that's just a convention. There are other ways to restrict it to get it to be one to one. Um, but for tangent, if you remember the tangent function here, um, I'll, I'll graph the lines x equals negative pi over 2. That's an asymptote right there. And x equals positive pi over 2. A cycle of the tangent wave, let me say like this. this it's this red line right here. It cycles between negative pi over 2 where tangent is undefined and posit positive pi over 2. So we can get every output of the tangent within this cycle between these two asymptotes. So it's a natural choice, right? We can get everything we need. And then all the other repetitions of the tangent wave aren't needed. We can deal with all of the outputs that way. Uh, cosine, let me just graph cosine real quick. Cosine is restricted in a different way. And the choices for restrictions are meant in, to all work together nicely. In other words, we could restrict sine and cosine in other ways, but we might run into some difficulties with our calculations. So right here, I'm just gonna grab the cosine wave. And this goes to our question that we just answered. Cosine is restricted in a different way. It's, let me put that in red. It's restricted between zero and pi. All right, so here, let me minimize this. So you get some kind of a visual. For cosine, we're actually cutting it between zero and pi, not negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. This gives us a full half cycle of the cosine wave, and that's going to cover every output of cosine, from positive 1 up here to negative 1 when the input is pi. So when we're looking for principle, 
angles. We're looking for angles that are in between these values here. That's all we're doing. That's the long and short of it. So whenever we're, gra if you're asked for a, a principal value for an angle, for sine, cosine, or tangent, you're looking for the angle that fits in between these values. Cosine and sine repeat themselves every two pi radians, so you could just add two pi to get another angle that has the same output, but we're only picking angles that are in this, in this range right here. And tangent repeats itself every pi radian, so any, any, any angle you look at for tangent, if you add pi to it, the result will have the same tangent, right? And so we're just looking for tangents, uh, we're looking for angles in between negative pi over two and positive pi over two. And when we restrict it in that way, we can get consistent results in our inverses. So here, um, we, we chose 1.83 as our answer because that in radians is between zero and pi. Now in all of these answers, we run into similar types of questions. Let's go through them. Uh, here are the arc cosine of 0.1. So in the calculator, I'm just gonna hit second cosine 0.1. And here we are in degrees now. They want it in degrees, so I press mode. I go down and over to degrees, okay. I quit out, hit enter, I get 84.26, which is between zero and pi radians, or zero and 180, so that works. So it's this choice. And this one, take a moment, read it. Here they want the answer in radians, so let's go to calculator mode, radian, and then quit out, hit second sine of 0.43, and we get 0.444, so that one is right here, and that's between negative pi over two and positive pi over two, right? Pi is just about 3.14 divided by two is about 1.07, so it's between negative 1.7 and positive 1.07. It's in that range. Here, take a moment, read it. They want to us to work in degrees now. We're just going back and forth. Hit mode, go to degree, quit out, and hit second tangent of negative 16, enter. We get negative 86.4, which is correct because that is um, between, this is in degrees, negative 90 and positive 90, negative pi over two and positive pi over two. So that works. And I think that's it. All right, I hope this helped.